Have you ever thought about having one definitive collection of tips and tricks for 7 days today? Today, with the assistance of these amazing individuals on the screen, I have compiled just that. 70 tips in total, organized by their purpose for easy navigation. This is aiming for gaming, and today we're aiming for zombie slaying. Drop some of the starting items. The claim block can be crafted later, and the starting node is useless. The torch is also not very effective as a weapon. It's mainly useful as a light source. Complete your tutorial quests immediately to earn 4 perk points that will greatly help you get started. Alternatively, if you want to start in a specific city, you can postpone the final tutorial quest if you know which city you wish to stay in. Finishing the quest, at any point, calculates the nearest trader based on your current location. Craft padded armor from duct tape and cloth for affordable early game protection. Build a frame pillar to easily access roofs and reach the final loot and quest targets faster. Frames can also be used to block entrance from enemies and you can repair them as well. Checking the trader on the first day is essential. This allows you to plan for the first few days and determine the amount of money you need before the shop refreshes. You can now highlight traders on the map along with other map pins, which helps with navigation. Buy and equip a cigar from the trader for additional strength and a bartering bonus. Trader Jane often sells them. Another great item to buy is Nerdy Glasses. They provide plus 1 intellect and a 10% experience bonus. If you plan to sell level 1 items, scrap them and sell the parts instead. You will get more dukes by selling the parts than by selling the entire item. Always try to repair items before selling them to the trader. You will get more dukes if an item is fully repaired compared to when it is heavily damaged. Make robotic to redama from lead to sell it for additional dukes. Now it requires lead instead of iron. You can greatly boost your income by collecting everything you have and combining bonuses from different items, food and skills to sell all your junk. Avoid double dipping quest locations by first looting the pay dirt and then triggering the quest with the exclamation mark. Loot crate contents are usually not available in the early stages of the game. However, double dipping works well when looting mailboxes. Complete a quest or two on your first day. It gives you a good head start and quest rewards are usually better than what you earn through looting. During a buried supplies quest, always check your surroundings for spawn zombies once you hear a ding sound. This precaution can save you from being surrounded underground. Be especially careful during the final looting as it can also trigger the appearance of zombies. Don't neglect quests as they offer progressively better rewards including greater quantities of rewards as you level up through the tiers. For example, after completing 7 tier 1 quests, you will have the opportunity to choose a bicycle as one of your rewards. You don't have to exclusively focus on quests from the current tier. For instance, instead of completing 7 tier 5 quests, you can finish 9 tier 4 quests and still receive the tier 5 reward. This approach is much faster as tier 5 quests can be quite tedious. Walking out of the quest range after starting it will cause the quest to end and be considered as failure. Explosives are extremely effective in points of interest, particularly when dealing with tier 5 POIs. They can save you a significant amount of ammunition. Although it can be considered cheating, it's worth mentioning that you can reload your game and get a new list of available quests from traders. The new infested quests are excellent for gaining experience and they also provide an additional infested chest as a bonus reward. Quest progression is shared among traders of the same type. For example, if the first trader gen gives you a tier 1 quest and you complete them, the second trader, if it's also gen, will offer you tier 2 quests upon your first visit. Similarly, Rekt will have his own quest progression. Remember that each biome offers different loot. The forest biome has the lowest quality loot, while the desert, wasteland and snow biomes have better loot. However, these areas have harder enemies. Starting from Alpha 21, you can see the difficulty level of points of interest in the user interface. This information can help you determine whether you are ready to visit a particular POI or even build a base inside it. When you are regaining thirst, your stamina regeneration increases by 15%. You can take advantage of this by drinking past 100% as the buff will last until you drop back down to 100%, giving you a longer lasting effect. Unfortunately, this bonus does not stack with the coffee or beer buffs. In Alpha 21, pots have become a necessity and you can find them in POIs. Many POIs have pots lying on the tables in the kitchen. While traveling, keep an eye out for tree stumps. If you chop them down with your axe, you have a chance to obtain honey, which can be used as food or to cure a 5% infection. Consume food before entering a house or during horde night. Don't underestimate the added stamina bonus from food. 7 minutes of plus 20 stamina can give you an extra swing with your weapon. Be cautious while driving and avoid crashes as transportation vehicles can now sustain serious damage. 
Be prepared to repair them using a repair kit. Drink beer while riding your bike to travel for 2 minutes without worrying about stamina. Instead of lockpicking, you can simply break into safes. This method takes time but can be worth it in some cases. The new police cars introduced in Alpha 21 can also be opened using a lockpick or by wrenching them like safes. However, be aware that doing so will trigger the alarm and spawn several ferals. Plan your moves ahead accordingly. To disable the new fire obstacles, follow the pipe and turn off the valve. Keep an eye out for construction side boxes that contain additional loot. They can be easy to miss, but they are definitely worth checking. By the way, clicking the like button on this video will show me that you enjoyed it. It's very important to me and motivates me to make more videos for you. In the beginning, utilize pipe weapons as they only require pipes for repairs and are much cheaper to maintain compared to more advanced weapons. All mods increase both weapon and tool damage and block damage. Don't hesitate to attach wood splitters to your club or a full auto mod to your pistol. By the way, an iron breaker mod on a range is exceptionally effective. Delay crafting new tier weapons until they reach a decent level to support enough mods and be worthwhile. Your previous tier weapon might have better damage with the help of additional installed mods while consuming less stamina compared to the next tier. When scrapping items like brass trophies in your inventory, you will only receive 75% of the materials compared to putting the items as they are into the forge. Now you have the ability to pin and track recipes. The bow is an excellent weapon for initiating combat, especially if you crouch to gain a sneaky damage bonus. This strategy works for both animals and zombies. Avoid the harvesting animation with knives by aiming just above the body and then adjusting your aim to make the attack connect. This technique significantly increases harvesting speed. Don't overlook packaged blocks at POIs as they yield cement, cobblestone and now even food, requiring almost no effort to obtain. Workbenches no longer yield forged iron, but drinks machines provide both forged steel and iron when ranged. Gas stations can be ranged to obtain forged iron, steel and fuel. Lights are a great source of steel when ranged. To obtain pipes quickly, you can range items like sinks and radiators. Scrapping or smelting radiators found in cars is a way to acquire brass. To obtain the best resources from a vehicle, it needs to be intact and searchable, which will yield batteries and engines. Additionally, your salvaging level increases the odds of finding batteries and engines as well. The best resources are always obtained by ranging once the car's health points reach 50%. If you're specifically after engines and batteries, it's pointless to fully range the car. Traders often give antibiotics as rewards, so if you are unlucky with finding honey, use them instead. If you want to acquire more resources from mining, level up Miner 69er and Mother Lord and also use Rockbusters. Once you acquire a range, you can demolish everything in a POI, including lights and TVs to obtain a good amount of electrical parts, which can be sold for dukes. Starting from Alpha 21, zombies may attempt to eat your hunted animals, such as deer. Additionally, animal bodies disappear after a while, so even if you are certain everything is fine, keep this in mind. Another essential item starting from Alpha 21 is a water filter, which is sold by traders for 1500 dukes and is used to craft a duke collector that yields 3 water every 24 hours. Be cautious when leaving too many workstations crafting, as this along with campfires increases the heat map, which can spawn screamers nearby. Place a block to prevent a POI from appearing in the quest list. Build a bunker base with a single entrance bridge to effectively control incoming horde knights. This is by far the most efficient base design you can create. When sneaking through a POI, stepping on any garbage or broken glass can cause noise that may wake up zombies. You can remove the noise by chopping it up with your arcs or by reading one of the urban combat magazines to pass through silently. Starting from Alpha 21, spears are quite effective. They have useful bonuses such as the ability to attack enemies from a distance and their books can still be found in mailboxes, making it easy to collect the full set bonus. The full set now fully recovers your stamina after each kill, by the way. Using steroids when you have a sprained or broken limb prevents you from taking damage when using that limb. It also stops the timer from increasing when using the limb and reduces the speed penalty of damaged legs. It's wise to consume all food with bonuses before a hard night as it will make you stronger. Additionally, taking vitamins will help reduce the chance of getting infected if things don't go as planned. Consider investing 1-2 points into pack mole if you're struggling with carrying packages. However, in general it's more preferable to craft and install pocket mods. You can always relocate your skill points later in the game by purchasing Grandpa's Forgotten Elixir, which now costs 6000 dukes, making it a relatively cheap option. Some players choose parkour as their starting perk because it allows them to jump two blocks with a few ranks in it. 
The final rank of parkour has major benefits in that you no longer break or sprain the legs when falling. Consume Grandpa's Learning Elixir before Horde Nights for an additional experience boost. It is regularly sold at vending machines. You can change the game settings at any time. You can increase the difficulty or, if you're having trouble, lower it. You can even play with zombies disabled. Do not underestimate the power of mailboxes. With Alpha 21 you can now obtain hundreds of books by simply running around your favorite city. In my example, I acquired Spear Mastery on the sixth day. And just for fun, it takes 7 real life hours for the infection to reach 100% and kill you, which aligns with the 7 day cycle at the default 1 hour day. 7 days today? I hope with this guide you have achieved what we are aiming for today. For more guides, simply visit my channel and consider subscribing, it's that easy. Thank you all for watching and see you next time!